Hi everybody, welcome to Elementary Classical Mechanics, the subject where observing the universe suggests new mathematical and computational approaches that can literally transform our way of modeling and predicting any aspect of the world. Hi everybody, welcome back. In this lecture, we're going to continue our study of the kinematics of vectors in chapter one and introduce a notion of how we multiply two vectors together. The two ideas are the scalar product or dot product and the vector product or cross product. Okay, let's consider two vectors A and B and we're going to consider how we multiply them together. So the first notion of multiplication is the dot product or the scalar product. And this is a definition. A dot B is magnitude A, magnitude B, both of those are scalars, times the cosine of the angle between A and B, but we limit theta to be, to be between zero and pi. Remember, A and B form a plane the size of a parallelogram, and so we can talk about the uh, angle between them in that plane. Okay, so we have, we have some terminology. If A dot B equals zero, we say that A and B are perpendicular or orthogonal. And if A and B happen to be unit vectors, we would end their dot product with zero. We would say that they were orthonormal. With the dot product in hand, we can talk about the projection of one vector onto another. In particular, let's consider A and B as before, and we want to look at the projection of A onto B. Here's a little diagram below. So we do this by considering the unit vector associated with B, so that would be B divided by the magnitude of B, lowercase b, and the projection of A onto B is A dot lowercase b, the unit vector associated with B. And that would just be the magnitude of A, because magnitude of lowercase b is 1, times the cosine of angle, the angle between them. Now, often people say, well, why do you take the uh, make B unit vector? Why don't you just take A dot B? Well, when we talk about the projection of A onto B, we just want the amount of A in the direction of B. And if B kept getting bigger or smaller, that would, that, that would uh, get larger and smaller, and that would not capture the idea of the amount of A in the direction of B. Okay, now we come to the cross product, or the vector product. We take our two vectors, A and B, and we denote the cross product by A cross B, and this is a little more subtle here. It's the magnitude A, magnitude B, times the sine of the angle between them. Okay. Now it's a wrinkle. It's, where it's a vector product multiplied by a unit vector, lowercase n, that's perpendicular to the plane spanned by A and B. Remember, A and B are the size of a parallelogram. Now, there's an ambiguity in that. Is it pointing uh, away from the plane or down? Or, or is it pointing up or pointing down? Let's say it just like that for the moment. Well, here's a picture to illustrate that. Well, this is where we have the right hand rule. Take your right hand, okay, put, and we're looking at A cross B. Put your, imagine this with the top figure. Put your thumb in the direction of A and the rest of your fingers in the direction of B. And N should be pointing straight up out of your hand. And that's the convention we take. Try it below and it doesn't work. So if A in, were to equal B, 
or A and B were parallel or collinear, then the cross product would be the zero vector. Okay, so the cross product and the dot product are very different, but they're very geometrical in their nature, and they they um, sort of codify different aspects of the geometry of the two vectors in space. Okay, we're going to see lots of examples of the dot product and cross product as we go along, but that's it for today. In the next lecture, I will want to say a few things about problem set one. So bye for now.